Hello, this is Steve from Shire Studios, and you're about to watch uh, this video about guitars and the music business in general. I want to apologize for camera work, for audio, for you know everything that's involved. This is my first video, and I'm just trying to see how this thing works and how everything goes. And I'm doing a lot of moving around and looking at guitars on the wall, and not every uh, camera placement is perfect. Um, but close-ups do, do occur, so um, things will get better if you do, you know, like this video and subscribe. I'll get better equipment and I have better sound equipment around here. I just, this is just a quick, I'm on vacation and I'm doing this video and I'll mention shout-outs to, to the guys that I've been watching videos of uh, in the video here coming up. So, again, thank you and, and um, you know, patience please um, and enjoy. Uh, I am Steve, this is Shire Studios, and this is my very first video, so um, let's hope I can make more. Uh, let's hope this goes well and you guys enjoy it. I do think I have some pretty cool stuff to show you, and maybe a couple things to talk about. The um, reason I'm doing this, uh, I've been watching a lot of videos lately about guitar guitars and the music business. Uh, a couple shout-outs to guys like Rick Beato. Um, and his buddy Rhett, uh, was it Rhett Scholl? Um, also Pete Pardo, who kind of reviews music. Um, there's Dylan Talks Tone, uh, some great videos there. There's The Guitologist, Brad, I think it is. Anyway, I've been watching a lot of those guys' videos, and what I've been doing here for the last year, I said, well, I can make a video and maybe some people would be interested in it. So, if you like it, subscribe, or please just subscribe anyway. Um, subscribing will let me know that, you know, um, you guys are liking this and I'll, I'll make more. Um, I do have a lot of projects coming up, um, so there'll be plenty of stuff to do videos about. What I'm going to do today, um, I'll go back about a year, well, I'll go back to 2018, early 2018. Um, we moved into a new house. While we were moving, you discover a lot of stuff. I had a guitar that was given to me back in 1996 while I was building our previous house. Uh, one of the framers, who was an, an old friend, gave me a Hondo SG. Um, at the time, I had never heard of it, but it looks like a, a regular Les Paul SG. It had that red color. It was missing a pickup. Um, missing the bridge and tailpiece, um, the knobs were, I think the knobs were gone, the back was covered with stickers, it was just in poor, poor, poor shape. Um, he said, maybe you could do something with it. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll do something with it. So it sat in a corner, or it sat in a closet for 20 some years, 21 years, or whatever. And when we moved, I thought, well, if I'm taking it with me, I've got to do something with it. So once we moved in and got settled, I decided, well, okay, I'm going to do something with it. We had, uh, my wife and I had, had discovered this new painting technique, uh, and we had done it on a couple tables, and and she actually came up with a, a really cool space kind of theme. It's what it looked like. Uh, paint on the table, and I thought, well, that, that's pretty cool, and that's kind of what I'm going to shoot for on this first guitar I'm going to do. So I had torn apart this SG. Hondo SG. Stripped it down, um, primered it, and got it ready for paint. I then painted it, uh, and it came out super cool, uh, way cool. Um, and I thought, well, this is this is kind of neat. So I carried on, and the the, the issue was was coating this thing. And again, it was my first one, so I had watched videos, other people doing stuff, using spray lacquers. I just didn't want to go anything fancy. I wanted to use just, you know, spray can stuff. So I started with a spray lacquer, um, and it was okay, but it didn't quite uh, do what I wanted it to do, so I ended up buying a polyurethane spray, and I did that, and it also didn't quite, I mean, as I polished it, it wasn't wasn't quite doing what I thought. So 
One of the videos I watched, there was a, a guy, and I can't remember his name, um, but he used a two-part solution, but it was in a can, so when you get it, you have to smash it together, you know, bust it, and mix it up, and then spray it, and you got maybe 24 hours or 48 hours to use it. And I had two guitar, that had the second guitar, which I'll talk about in a second, um, so I sprayed them both, and they, they came out really nice. The, the issue I was having was when you go to sand, um, if there's little imperfections, I didn't have a paint booth or anything like that, so if a speck of dust or a bug lands on it while it's trying to dry, um, that creates a hole or a potential hole, and when you're sanding, those holes, uh, those holes will open up. And that happened to me a little bit, and I had to kind of quit where I was and just kind of accept what I had. Um, so what I'm going to do is I have a guitar hanger over here, and I'll hang them up as I'm, I've done three, and I'm working on a fourth. Uh, three use the same technique, the same painting technique. The fourth one, um, I, I did a dip, a swirl dip, and it's just the body right now. I'm trying to get some, some holes drilled, and, and I have all the equipment for it, and i got to put it all together. But So the first one, again, was the Hondo SG, and it was your regular red SG. So I'm going to come over and pick up the camera and turn it over there, and we'll take a look at it. Pardon my moving this thing. So this is it. Um, it does have the. I can go all the way up. It does have the. Uh, does not ha have the Hondo uh, label anymore because I had to paint the neck and the headstock because it was the SG red and it really would not match this paint job. So. I think I'll stick my own Shire Guitar or Shire Studios label uh, on that headstock at some point. Um, but here it is. So, yeah, we had, uh, as I was saying earlier, when you're sanding and there's Im little imperfections, those imperfections will create huge holes or gashes or whatever you want to call them. And as you can see where this little constellation over here is, that was a major, major issue and I was ready to give up and throw the thing into the nearest uh, ditch. Uh, many times I was ready to do that. Um, but again, my wife is an artist and she you know, pushed on and said, hey look, you can fix it. Do this or do that or try this or try that. So we ended up, or I ended up, with a little bit of a, her help making that um, constellation kind of try to cover up the imperfections that were, that were there. If I can get some different views. Um, close up you can see the, the type of paint job this is which turned out really really cool. The guitar I ended up replacing every single thing in it except for the tuners. The tuners are stock. The pickups are Seymour Duncan 59 Blue Series. They're El Nico 2's. Um, those are a brand new uh, bridge and tailpiece from, where did I get that? Oh, those are Tone Pros. The knobs I got off eBay, they, you know, they're like a purple, purple flake. Get into there and see that. But So they match the guitar and the knob uh, also was a purple flake. Uh, I can leave a link to where I bought those um, off eBay. The pots, everything, you know, the guts are, have all been replaced. The pots are CTS pots. The switch is a switchcraft and a new jack. Um, so that's it. I really had a lot of fun with this one, and that, that kind of got me on to the next one, because once I did this, I thought, well, this is kind of cool. So let me, and actually my wife was looking to, to paint one, so I started to look for one for her. I ended up doing it because she was too busy, but... I'm going to put the camera down and, and swap guitars out, and uh, we'll talk about that one. So I ended up looking at Facebook Marketplace, something local, and I found this guitar, which was a Dean Vendetta. And stop it from swinging. I think I ended up paying $25 for this thing. That it came with a 
pedal and a small little amp, tiny little amp, which I didn't need either one of those, but I wanted the guitar. So I think total I paid 60 bucks for all three. Um, this is a really light guitar. Uh, the wood is, I can't remember what type of wood begins with a P. Extremely light, way lighter than the Les Pauls and Strats that I've been used to playing for years and years and years and years. Uh, the very first guitar I had, electric guitar, was a, a Les Paul, I'll show you that later, in 1979. So this thing is really weird to play for me because it's so light. Um, it just doesn't feel right. Uh, all I did on this one, so the, the SG, I painted the whole thing front and back. I only showed you the front, the back. I still need to kind of like polish and um, kind of clean things up. But this one, I just did the front. Uh, the sides and the back are still stock, uh, kind of like a flat black. I didn't change much on this guitar. Uh, I did replace the switches, or the, the switch and the pots. Those are CTS pots, Switchcraft switch and a new jack, and I did get new knobs um, that would match the paint, they're a little red, uh, black and red. Um, I did play this once, and it played really well, and I want to play it more, but what I was having issues with were the string through ferrules were pooling out under tension, under tune tension, and I'm not sure quite what to do with that, and I've been kind of busy doing other things. So if you have any tips, leave it as a comment. I would appreciate it. Um, uh, I don't know if I need to glue them in or... But anyway, I don't know yet, but um, at some point I'll get to fixing those from pulling out. One of the interesting things about this was I only used three different colors, black, red, and a little bit of yellow, as you can see here. But what ended up happening, and I'm not quite sure how, I guess it's a blend of colors over time, because initially they weren't there, but you can see some... I'll get a close-up. Sorry. So you can see some purple here, some purple up here, and there's actually a little bit of green um, around the bridge. So it was kind of interesting how those colors just kind of came out. They weren't there initially, like the next day, I thought, well, who the heck was messing with this? Uh, there's some different colors coming on here, so that's kind of cool. Not much else to say about this one. Um, mostly stock. Uh, again, paint job and the pots and switch are, and the knobs are new. And again, string ferrules, if you guys can know what I need to do to keep them stable, I would appreciate it. Now I'll get the next guitar. And don't look at all the bottles here. I have them all turned around so I'm not advertising for anyone except for the hat, but nothing I can do there. So this guitar I also found on Facebook. Turns out it was a, um, sorry this one's not quite polished, but there's a gentleman who was selling this, is part of a local um, popular band here in Cleveland, Ohio. I didn't know it at the time, but, and uh, we have some friends in common. This again is a Hondo, so who owns two Hondos but me? Uh, Hondo Les Paul. I'm guessing mid-80s, early 80s or something. Um, I completely gutted this one all the way down to nothing. Um, the only things that are stock, I guess, are the bridge and tail piece and the tuners. Again, Hondo made a pretty good guitar, so I didn't really bother with the tuners because they're not, they're not bad. I might replace the nut on this one. The Whoever cut this nut, the, the strings are so deep into this nut, it's, I don't really like it. So I have a couple uh, nuts uh, lying around. I'll probably replace that. But New pots, uh, CTS pots, new, new knobs. Uh, these are GFS, uh, Guitar Fetish pickups. These are Alnico 5s. Um, new switch, new switch plate. 
I went with the white vein everywhere because it just seemed to work with this paint job. Um, this one did have banding, and I will zoom in, or at least bring the camera in, so you can get a close-up. This is actually metallic paint. All the colored paint is metallic. The black and white paint is not. Um, I'm really liking this. The more I have it and it's finished and polished and for a long time and this one almost ended up in the nearest ditch or trash or whatever I can find to throw it out because it was driving me crazy. Um, and again, it just, this did have uh, binding on it, but I didn't like the way the binding was looking with the paint job, so I just went ahead and I sprayed all the all the binding black. So forgive me. I know there's going to be a lot of people say, how could you do that? Well, I did it, so live with it. Um, this thing plays awesome. What really surprised me on this guitar was the very first time I went to play it with my band during a practice. First song, playing great, I'm looking down, and I don't know where I'm at. This is the very first guitar ever I have ever seen that does not have inlays on the top of the fret, fretboard the neck and that just puzzled me so um, I have some inlays on order I'm gonna go ahead and drill them in I've got a little hand drill with a two millimeter bit which I can do that so anyway that's the third guitar um, so I'm gonna set the camera down actually I'm gonna pause it and then start again all right here is uh, the fourth guitar I've been working on. This is a Telebody I bought off eBay pre, mostly pre uh, routed out. Um, I still have to, well, as you can see, I've got the green tape there as I'm measuring where the bridge is going to go, and I have to drill the bridge holes and the string through holes, and I got to drill the pick guard holes and the control plate holes and all that stuff. But um, all the, the control. Uh, pocket and the bridge pockets were all routed out. Um, this was a dip, a swirl dip, so paint on top of a water surface. And I dipped this in. This is the very first one. As you can see, I had a few things to learn. Um, I kind of ran out of paint. As you see, it kind of got lighter as, as, as the guitar went in. Uh, but it actually kind of gives it a cool kind of look. And when you put the pick guard on, <clears throat> you really can't tell as, as much. Um, I think it looks really cool. I've put the pick guard on and the neck on and, and uh, all the pieces parts in place and took pictures and maybe I'll, I'll throw them on there just so you can see kind of what it's going to look like. Um, right now I'm trying to get drills hold uh, or holes drilled, sorry. Um, I do have another body like this that I bought same time I bought this one so that one's also going to get dipped and that hopefully it's going to be this weekend or next weekend so that'll be another project I can uh, make a video on. Uh, I have a CNC machine now um, and I have two blanks, two body blanks. One is basswood, one is um, pine and I'm going to make similar to this telebody. That's what I'll start with but eventually maybe I'll make my own shape but we'll see. So I got plenty of projects, plenty of uh, videos I can continue to make. If you guys like it, again, subscribe, uh, please. That'll let me know that you're enjoying this stuff. So, and we can also talk music, which um, once I get done, I have a few other guitars to show you, my collection, and then I have one question that I'll pose to you and hopefully you'll comment on it in the comments. So I'm going to pause. Okay, we're back. So this is the very first guitar I ever owned. Um, 1979, I received this for Christmas. So thank you to my parents. This is a 1955 Les Paul, Gibson Les Paul. It's a 5577 uh, is what it's called. So it's a reissue, and I think they only made about 350 of these. I don't know the exact number. P90s, so I grew up playing P90s. I knew nothing but P90s for most of my life because this guitar was my main guitar up until about three years ago. 
Love it. Plays great. Um, I can't say enough good things about this guitar. It is just completely awesome. Um, I've seen one on Reverb recently, and it's going for a pretty good dollar, so I think my parents made a, a good move buying this thing. Um, again, love this guitar. And we'll move on to the next one. Okay, the next guitar uh, is a Eric Clapton Strat. Uh, that's probably all I need to say about this thing. This thing plays great. I don't think I've ever played a guitar that plays as well as this thing does, so thank you, Eric. Um, love this guitar. Um, that PV amp you can see back there, that goes back to 1979 as well when I got that uh, Gibson Les Paul. Orange I've been playing uh, more recently. Um, love that amp. Played the Marshall for years and years and years and years and years and switched to the Orange. This guitar I bought in 2002. This is a 1960 reissue classic series uh, Les Paul. It's an awesome guitar. The power out of this guitar is just phenomenal. Um, you forget it until you play it. And once you play it, you're like, oh, this is just great. Um, and I don't play it enough, but because I've got all these other guitars. But And I was never a telly person, but I am becoming a telly person. And this is a Squire Classic Vibe, uh, 50s Vibe. I love this guitar. Uh, just purchased this a few months back. And uh, I have not enough good things to say about it. It's just great. It plays great. I had you know, some setup stuff I needed to do to it. But once I gave it a full setup, this thing rocks. And it's, um, I don't want to say it's my main guitar now, but I have a couple shows coming up in August. And I'm going to be using this Tele, and then I'm going to use the Space Guitar um, for those two shows. So we'll see how it goes. All right, I'm going to pause. Alright, um, I just want to close out this video with one question um, that kind of came up at band practice the other night and see what you guys think. Uh, David Gilmore's guitar collection that he sold for charity, um, the Black Strat, sold for $4 million, just short, shy of $4 million. The bass player brought up the other night, um, what would Jimmy Page's number one go for? Uh, the other guitar player, he said he didn't think it would go for uh, 1.5 million. I think that's crazy, but that's just me. I'm a big Jimmy Page fan. He's probably the king to me, him uh, and a few others, Eric Clapton and, and so on. Um, but still, for David Gilmore's guitar to sell f for more than Jimmy Page's guitar, who to me uh, that band was the biggest band in the world. Uh, Jimmy Page, every iconic photo except for the first year where he's playing his Dragon Telly um, is a picture of him with that that number one. Um, the guitar player did talk about the fact that did Jimmy use all that, that number one for all the recordings? Well, we really don't know, but... So I'm interested in, in, in knowing what you think. Um, that would go for uh, in, in two different ways, right? Because the the auction for uh, for David Gilmore was for charity, so that might have increased the prices. So what would it sell for in a straight auction? What would it sell for in a charity auction? Um, and since we're talking about guitars and 59 bursts, um, if it is ever found, and Joe Bonamassa says he does know where it is, he hasn't seen it, some guitar collection on the East Coast, what would uh, Clapton's uh, Bino burst go for? Let me know your, th your thoughts on that. Which one would be better? Page, number one, or Clapton Bino? I think Clapton Bino has more historic... <laughs> uh, so I think that would go for more, but that's just me. I don't know. It's a it's a toss up. It's a, it's a good it's a good question.